Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats if you can. If you're not near a seat, find one, please. Good morning. Let's, uh, let's get to our seats, please. Inviting everyone to take a seat, please. Uh, we're going to begin very soon. So please, uh, inviting all of you to take a seat. Ushers, please continue to assist uh, with giving or providing assistance with getting seats. All right, let's find our seats, please. Let's, uh, let's please be seated. All right, let's clear the aisles if we can. Good morning again. Let's clear the aisles, please. If you haven't found a seat, ushers, let's assist with helping individuals to find seats, please.
All right, family, it's not too late to find seats. Let's find seats, but we need the aisles cleared, please. All aisles need to be cleared. All right, good morning. Good morning. All right, got to talk to me. Good morning again. And welcome to the Houston Tillerson University commencement exercise. All right, let's clap it up. Clap it up. Now, it is my job as a point of order, let me remind us that this ceremony is a very solemn occasion. And as such, it mandates proper protocol be followed. And therefore, I ask at this time that we'd either turn off our cell phones or silence them, put them in airplane mode, uh, but turn them off, all right? Also, we ask that all aisles be cleared and kept cleared so as not to impede the processional or the recessional. Families, we do have professional photographers to capture the moment when each graduate cross, crosses or receives his or her degree. Please be respectful and do not come to the front area in front of the stage to take pictures, all right? Additionally, please at this time reference the QR codes that are located on the armrest of each seat and the screens to my left. We'll have the QR code available to view today's program if you have not received a program. At this time, I invite us all to stand for the professional, processional, sorry. Thank you very much. Let's stand.
Good morning, Trustee Chair McDonald and President Wallace. We are now ready to proceed with the 2023 commencement ceremony. Now that was some good news. I can, we can do a little bit better than that. <laughs> You know what day it is. It's graduation day! Yes! This is your day, graduates. You have earned the right to celebrate this major milestone in your life. We are proud of you, and we celebrate you. Thank you, Dr. Vanderpoy, and good morning and welcome to all of those who are assembled here today. To mark this very special occasion and in their official capacity, I am pleased that we have the members of the Houston Tillotson Board of Trustees. Would you all please stand and be recognized? I call special attention to our board chair, Dr. Carol McDonald, board vice chair, Dr. Vanessa Monroe, board treasurer, Bishop Robert E. Hayes, Jr., and Ms. Katrine Formby, as well as Dr. Thomas McDowell. Thank you all for your dedication of time and treasure. Now, today marks yet another historic commencement ceremony, as this is the first class to have my signature as seventh president and CEO of Houston Tillerson University. And you know, graduates, although today is all about you, however, I will say that it's also about family. Yeah, and friends. The village that helped you get to this point, and you owe your parents, your guardians, your grandparents, your aunts, your uncles, mother, mama, auntie, TD. Uh, keep going, keep going, yes. Ray Ray, Pookie, all of those. Everybody has a Ray Ray and Pookie, but I won't. We owe them a great deal of gratitude, so don't forget to thank them, okay? Now, on behalf of all the graduates, to all of those assembled, I say thank you on their behalf for being in their village for nurturing, loving, and supporting them. You help to make the difference between their success and failure. So graduates, give your family and friends and aunts and uncles and grandmothers and grandparents a round of applause. Now, in speaking of family, some of you might have noticed that maybe my name changed a little bit since the last time you saw me. And I am so pleased to introduce my husband to the HT family. You knew him already, but would Dr. Dio Wallace please stand, my beloved husband? <laughs> I love you. You're so great. He's so great. Now, just as its name implies, commencement symbols a new beginning. Graduates, today you will turn the page and begin a new chapter in your life. For our faculty and current students, today marks the end of another academic year. This class is very special to me indeed, and I will take a moment of personal privilege to tell you a little bit about 245 of my very best friends, the graduates of the class of 2023. In this class, we have students representing five international countries. Morocco, Nigeria, Pakistan, South Africa, and Spain. 
with our international students, if you were here to join us, would you please stand? If any of our international students, there they are. Now we have 23, write that number down and don't forget it, 23 graduates finishing their degree with a perfect, 4.0 grade point average. That's worth a... Would the perfect 4.0 unblemished transcript students please stand? See, they came in, they were not playing with you all, okay? They were not playing. They were playing no games. There are also six graduates who are members of the esteemed Du Bois Scholars Program. We are so proud of that program led by Dr. Miles. Would all of the Du Bois Scholars please stand? If you're in that class. Oh yes, oh yes. Now, for many families, Houston Tillerson University is a treasured legacy. One of those many legacies continue today with the graduation of Jamar Reyes with a degree in psychology, who is the brother of our esteemed head men's soccer coach, Joshua Reyes. Their family has had a total of four people graduate from Houston Tillerson University. Would the Reyes family please stand? There he is. Now see, this is not uncommon. Houston Tillerson has a history of graduating families. And I want to recognize all of the legacy graduates of Houston Tillerson. Would you please stand? If your grandmother, your grandfather, your daddy, your uncle, if you had a family member graduate from Houston Tillerson, would you please stand if you have a legacy in your family of graduates? Now that's a Yelp review. That's 5.0 on the Yelp. Now there are also members of the class of 2023 that loved us so much that they had to graduate twice. With those who graduated once before and came back for yet another degree, and if you are in the class, please stand and be recognized. We're just trying to get our ratings up. That's our Yelp score. We're at a five now. And we also have some Houston Tillerson staff graduating with their master's degree. Would you please stand and be recognized? <laughs> Miss Asia Haney, Miss Sarah Gaines, and our director of IT, Mr. Malcolm Haraway. I also want to recognize the faculty. Uh, Tom Joyner used to always say he was the hardest working man in radio. Well, we have the hardest working faculty in the higher ed kingdom. Would the faculty of Houston Tillerson please stand and be recognized? We are also celebrating the retirement of two very special individuals, Dr. Rosalie Martin, who we will be honoring later in the program, celebrating 50 years of service. And she will be recognized later in the program. And I want you to join me at the very end of the program after the alma mater, uh, Dr. Quindlin, our choir director, will be closing us out in her final close, and when she does this final close, I want us to really show her some love. She is retiring, uh, and this is her last official act at Houston Tillerson University. So Dr. Gloria Quinlan. Now 
Now, you know, in 1973, some of my favorite music was released. Superstition by Stevie Wonder. Love Train by the OJs. And unfortunately, the Miami Dolphins won the Super Bowl. Who that? <sighs> now, here to represent that great moment in time is the class of 1973. Here are the members of our golden class who will be recognized in the program. Would you just please wave or stand so we can see you? And they are joined by all of the alums who are here for Reunion Weekend. With the Reunion Weekend alums, please stand and wave wherever you may be. I also want to recognize a very special alum on yesterday. I had a chance to speak to the alumni in their program. And we had a very special alum who heard some things that I was talking about, some things that we wanted to do for our students, and we wanted to do some renovations to the cafeteria. And Miss Beverly Curry, Curly, reached in her pocket from the class of 1963 and gave us a $10,000 check toward the renovations of Davidge Durden. Miss Curly, would you just please stand? I don't know where she is. She's somewhere. There she is, my Sarah, thank you. <laughs> now, Bernard Meltzer once said, there is no better exercise for your heart than reaching down and helping to lift someone up. This saying was embodied by two individuals who have given a transformational gift. And today I'm honored to recognize these two benevolent individuals, Jackie and David Gardner. Would you please stand? In December, they provided to several members of the graduating class up to $3,500 to clear their balances. Their total gift was $100,000. Thank you. In what we call the last mile campaign, we are so thankful for their gift. And I know many members of this graduating class who have received that gift to help get them here today are so thankful to you. So thank you so much. You know, um, and speaking of giving, you know, I'm in a church and kind of in a pseudo pulpit. And you know, Pastor Wallace, I'm, I'm feeling a little offering coming on. <laughs> I, I know that there is somebody or somebody's in this room that could maybe match the energy of the gardeners. The Spirit is telling me <laughs> You see, the Spirit is telling me that there is somebody in here that has another $100,000. Huh? I actually think the Lord is telling me that there might be actually a million dollars in the room. Do I hear two million dollars in the room? And I'll pause this whole graduation for the billion dollar gift. You can take a picture with everybody. I'll sit down for the bill. So if you got the billion dollars, if you want to just make a start on it, you can just come on down. But no, really, please visit www.htu.edu to make a deposit on your billion dollar gift. Your contributions today are helpful and no amount is too small. So thank you for that and amen. At this time, please stand for the invocation given by Ms. Surrender Lockridge, followed by the Negro National Anthem, and the program will now proceed as printed. Good morning, Houston Tillerson University. Good morning. 
when I think about the goodness of the Lord and all he has done for me, my soul cries out hallelujah. I am Surrender Carolyn Lockridge. I am a student leader here and soon to be alone. And I am a beautiful and captivated member of Alpha, Kappa Alpha, Sorority Incorporated. <laughs> and at this time, I ask you to join me for the invocation. <laughs> Go ahead and bow your heads, close your eyes, and open your hearts. Dear Gracious and Heavenly Father, we come before you with the spirit of gratitude. As we gather here today to celebrate your children's accomplishments, Houston Tilson University, class of 2023, we thank you. Thank you, Lord, for your grace, your favor, your protection, and your everlasting mercy. This journey has not been easy, but holding on to your mighty hand has led us here today. As we walk across this stage, we're reminded of your goodness in every step. Lord, we thank you for our beautiful and blinding bright futures. As we step into the uncertainty of our next chapter, I ask you, God, to remind us of exactly who you are. On our hungry nights, when a calf closed at seven o'clock, Lord, you kept us fed. On our early mornings, when those 8 a.m. classes almost took us out, Lord, you gave us strength to make it through the day. We wanted to give up and we wanted to throw in the towel, Lord, you wiped us tears and said, I will carry you when you're weak. There is nothing you cannot do, and there is no mountain you cannot move. You are the same God of yesterday, today, tomorrow, and forever to come. Lord, we thank you for our hardworking parents, family, friends, faculty, staff, and the amazing leadership that has helped and guided us along this journey. For without them, we would not be here today. God, we thank you for the family and friends we lost along this journey. Standing here without them is not easy, but Lord, thank you for strength. To the ones that did not support us, to the naysayers, to the non-believers, and in conclusion, to the haters. Lord, we want to thank you for them too. We ask you for forgiveness in advance as we laugh in their face and brag about just how good you are. Last, but certainly not least. Lord, we thank you for this illustrious Houston Tillerson University. She has stood proud and tall on a blue bunny hill for many generations. From her eastern window shining comes the promise on this day. And on this day, Lord, we thank you for our new educators, new doctors, lawyers, entrepreneurs, change makers, and pace setters. I ask you to give us the wisdom to use our knowledge, talents, and gifts for the good of all and to the harm of none. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. amen. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. We will be doing the Lift Every Voice and Sing arranged by Roland Carter and by permission, he has given you permission to sit after the first verse. I've been told that some of you think it's not long and that you want to stand through the whole thing. You still have permission to stand if you want.
Good morning. Oh, you can do better than that. I've heard you do better than that. Good morning. Good morning. Right. I first of all have to thank the person who decided that I would be the one who spoke after that. <laughs> I am Carol McDonald, chair of the Board of the Trustees, and on behalf of the board whom you've already met, I welcome and greet all of you, faculty, staff, alums, golden alums, students, and soon to be graduates, family, friends, and loved ones who are here to witness and celebrate this particular milestone in the lives of these scholars. I call you scholars today because by the end of this ceremony, you will hold a degree, and that sets you apart in this world. There are some seven billion people who walk this earth, and fewer than 7% of them have a degree. That's seven people out of every 100. That makes you exceedingly rare. So on behalf of the members of, board, of the Board of Trustees, please accept our congratulations on this rare accomplishment. Now usually at this point I sit down, but please indulge me for just a few minutes, especially since we're sitting in air conditioned comfort for this. I have been asked to announce some actions that the Board of Trustees has taken in this year. So to put this in context, you should know the things that the Board of Trustees usually does do not originate with them. We generally approve or disapprove budgets, new academic programs, building a new building, that sort of thing. But generally, these things have been deliberated over by a lot more people, and we're just there to say yes or maybe no. The one thing the university's bylaws directs us to do as trustees is to hire a new president when the office becomes vacant. And tell, let me tell you, having gone through that process in this last year, I hope it's a long time before we have to do it again. But we did that in this academic year, and I know Dr. Melva Wallace is proud and delighted to be presiding over her very first commencement uh, today as you graduate, uh, her first commencement at Houston Tillotson. Interestingly enough, the board took a couple of other actions this year that did not involve co consultation with others. First, the Board of Trustees has the sole authority to grant the title President Emeritus to any former president of Houston Tillotson University. At our annual meeting, which was just a couple of weeks ago, we did just that by naming Dr. Colette Pierce Burnett, <laughs> President Emeritus of Houston Tillotson University. And even if we're not sitting outside in the, in the heat, I am going to say we don't have time to go through her, her long list of accomplishments here. But I must say she made Houston Tillett's in a most visible and valuable part of this community. And she led us through those perilous early days of COVID and brought us safely back to campus. She called you her genius generation. So although she cannot be here today, I would not be surprised if she were watching the live stream. So let us congratulate Dr. Colette Pierce Burnett, 
President Emeritus of Houston Tillotson University. Second, on Charter Day last fall, the Reverend James Richardson spoke about the experiences of his great-great-grandfather, Reverend George Warren Richardson and his Northern abolitionist family. Richardson, in partnership with others, founded what came to be, came to be Samuel Houston College, first in Dallas and then in Austin. His son, George Owen Richardson, was the institution's first president. For many years, the roster of presidents of Samuel Houston College, Tillotson College, and Houston Tillotson University have been printed on programs for commencement, charter day, presidential inaugurations, and other special occasions. Until, until today, if you looked at the roster of Samuel Houston College presidents, you might not have noticed a gap between the first president who left in 1882 and the second president who took up the post in 1885. We didn't notice that gap until, the, until James Richardson pointed out to us last fall. So who filled that gap in leadership for those years? It was a woman. It was Carolyn Richardson, the wife of the founder, who filled that gap. She was a trained teacher and had opened a successful private college, college sorry, school before giving it up to raise her family. When her children were more or less independent of her, she taught at Samuel Houston College and had an additional title, principal and preceptress, meaning that she managed the day-to-day -day operation of the college even when there was a president. She served as president with more skill and steadiness than the college had known before. And she did that faculty while teaching a full course load. On April 21st, the Houston Tillotson Board of Trustees passed a resolution adding Carolyn A. Richards to the roster of Samuel Houston College presidents to be honored as part of Houston Tillotson's history. You can see that list on page 20 of your program. And finally, I must confess to being just a little nostalgic about today because this is the last time that I will bring greetings at a Houston Tillotson University commencement. In April of 2024, I will have completed my nine year term on the board and I will, as they say now, step away. I hope that each of you that are graduating today will support and sustain Houston Tillotson University. And my greatest hope is that one day, one of you will be standing here bringing greetings on commencement to a new generation of Houston Tillotson University graduates. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. On behalf of the faculty, I extend a warm and cordial welcome to President Dr. Melva Wallace, the Board of Trustees, staff members, family members, friends, and the graduating class of 2023. My name is Dr. Jason Carter, and I am the Chair of the Business Administration Department in the School of Business Te Te in Technology and a Professor of Management. Now, when Dr. Thompson Vollen told me that I would be delivering the greetings from the faculty today, I gladly accepted and immediately started thinking about what type of mind-bending knowledge I would deliver today. 
And as I pondered, my enthusiasm quickly waned and spiraled into thoughts of what did I just agree to. And that further spiraled into, I wonder what excuses I could come up with to extricate myself from this situation. It went from the dog ate my speech to faking my death, <laughs> for at least two hours at least. After the fear subsided, I decided to contemplate my remarks today. I asked myself, what would the faculty want me to say? Then it dawned on me, I should ask them. Quite revolutionary. So I did, and I have attempted to weave their comments into this message today. Firstly, I will embrace the words of Professor Kruger. Stay ready to keep from getting ready. You are the vibranium. Vibranium, Black Panther for those. <laughs> As professors, we're always proud to see how hard our students work to achieve their goals. We are proud to see our students embrace the challenges, face them head on, and push themselves to achieve greatness. We are impressed by your dedication, your creativity, and your ability to think critically. At this institution, we believe in providing an inclusive and diverse learning environment that encourages innovation, growth, and excellence. Our faculty takes pride in fostering an educational community that nurtures talent, skill, and ambition. We believe that education goes beyond textbooks and lectures. It is about developing leaders who are compassionate, versatile, and in the words of Dr. Williams, committed to staying the course in a spirit of excellence. To all our graduates, we congratulate you on completing your degree. And may your degree unlock many doors for you, Dr. Golden, or Dr. G, as I called her. We consider it an honor to have you as part of our academic community, and we look forward to seeing the exciting learning journey ahead of you. We are proud of the progress and the achievements you have made so far. Keep up the good work. We believe in you and know that you have what it takes to achieve great things. In life, you will face setbacks, but in the words of Dr. Mino, remember that setbacks are also learning opportunities. Or in the words of Professor Bowers, hard work and dedication. Work hard and stay dedicated along your path, no matter how frightening the road ahead may seem. It has been a challenging year, and the emergence of artificial intelligence has added a layer of complexity and challenges that were previously only seen in science fiction movies. One of our professors, Dr. Kraft, surmised, for the first time in my teaching career, I came to think the success of our students and my success as a professor requires that I compete well against artificial intelligence, like ChatGPT. However, the words of Dr. Opalese brought some context to these challenges. Technology resources are tools to advance understanding and critical thinking rather than a shortcut to laziness. Remember that. According to Professor Brown, in this lifetime, you will have many careers. Don't be afraid to pursue something different when the opportunity comes along. During hard times, give yourself grace and rest. Realize that life is one big lesson. Be kind to yourself and to others as much as possible. And with an exclamation from Dr. Vela, trust yourself, always, your older self will thank you. In conclusion, Professor Rivers reminds us that transitions are a part of life. How we lead, comfort, love, and share are more important than a single moment or series of events because, of the, mo because the moments or events will transition as well. I would like to emphasize that our doors are always open to you, and we encourage you to seek out guidance, support, and advice from your professors and mentors. We wish you all success in all of your endeavors, and we hope that you make the most of the opportunities offered to you. And in the words of Dr. Kellogg, Success in your field requires pleasing your immediate supervisor. If you cannot in co good conscience do that, become an entrepreneur or a college professor. <laughs> professor Holmes also reminds us that wonderful things in life are yours to experience when you reach out and embrace them. Have courage and persist. And most importantly, before you act, listen. Before you react, think. Before you spend, earn before you criticize, wait, before you quit, try. William Arthur Ward by way of Dr. Golden. 
Thank you for being part of this community, and we look forward to seeing you thrive and shine in the years to come. It is only fitting that I end these greetings with the words of our longest serving professor who is retiring at the end of this school year after 50 years of service to Houston Tillerson University. Let me say that again for the people in the back. 50 years of service to Houston Tillerson University. And in the words of Dr. Rosalie Martin, success is on the side of failure. Embrace failure. Look for lessons, move forward stronger. And be grateful and always pay it forward. Thank you. Thank you so much. I want to turn your attention to the QR codes that are on your armrest. If you see a QR code that is near your armrest, you can access the uh, commencement program if you did not get one, if you uh, need to see that. So that will help you follow along with today's events. And you can also scan on the screen to get a copy of the program and follow along. All hearts and minds clear? All right. It gives me great honor to introduce our speaker for today. During the few short months since coming to Houston Tillerson University, I have had the pleasure of meeting many outstanding, supportive, and successful alumni who have made and continue to make meaningful strides in their respective professions and in the communities in which they live. This morning, I have the distinct honor of introducing to some and presenting to others one of those phenomenal alums. His energy is infectious and his love for Houston Tillerson is unrivaled. He is what I call the consummate HT influencer. He supports HT financially and was recently honored during my inaugural Golden Gala for his $100,000 gift. Pause for the applause. Which he and his beautiful wife, Katina, donated to this institution and which he has given annually for three consecutive years. One has to wonder if anyone loves this institution as much as Gotzi. Prior to graduating from HT in 1994, he served as SGA president in both his junior and senior years. He was also initiated into the Gamma Lambda chapter of Kappa Alpha Psi Fraternity Incorporated. There we go. <laughs> Where his leadership skills allowed him to serve in roles on the local and regional levels. After earning a Juris Doctorate, he and his childhood friend and fraternity brother, Justin Martin, established Gotzi Martin PC, which over the past 16 years has become the largest African-American-owned personal injury law firm in Texas. Does everybody know that Texas is the largest state? So that's real. With offices in Dallas and Houston, the firm represents clients who, by no fault of their own, have suffered some form of injury. Their tagline is, I just got hit. I want you to Google that. I'm telling you, it will make your whole afternoon. I just got hit has become synonymous with justice in the communities they served. He is active in many community, civic, social, and religious organizations, along with numerous professional affiliations. He is also the recipient of several honors and awards. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, 
Friends of HT, please join me in welcoming our keynote speaker for this occasion, a son of Houston Tillerson, attorney, attorney David L. Gotzi. Good morning. As you can see, Dr. Wallace and I share the same love of energy. You know, it's funny, when I was in the back preparing to come out here today, I had a brief conversation with one of the board members, Ms. Formby, and she said, are you nervous? And I said, no, you know, I get up and run my mouth all the time. But, um, you know, you would think that after following that introduction, I might be a little nervous. But the truth of the matter is, is that I have to follow surrender. Yes. And now I'm a little bit nervous. But I will say to uh, Dr. McDonald and the rest of the board of directors, to Dr. Wallace, who in such a brief time has become a very close friend to my wife, Katina, and I, uh, to the faculty and staff, alumni, to the golden class of 1973, good morning. Good morning. And to you, the class of 2023. You know, I've never said publicly before, but when I sat in your seat 29 years ago, I dreamed that this day would happen, that someday I would be the commencement speaker at my alma mater's graduation. And so I'm very thankful to Dr. Wallace and Daphne McDowell and anyone else who played a role in allowing the universe to conspire for me to be here. I'm sure that the list was probably long and there were people much more qualified than myself to stand before each of you, but nevertheless, I'm happy to have this opportunity uh, and I'm very grateful for that. As I look amongst this class of 2023, I see you in your caps and gowns, and I, uh, I can't help but think that those caps and those gowns that you're wearing are pretty exciting for you, right? And I know there's some mixed emotion going on because all of you know that you'll never enter the campus of Houston Tillerson again, at least as students. I look forward to seeing you all at homecoming, but I know there are some relationships you'll, you'll leave behind and some of the ones that you've made with each other you'll carry forward. But of course, that's a mixed emotion because you're overwhelmed with a great amount of excitement and joy because you finally reached the day when you can adjust your cap and zip your gown, preparing yourself for your graduation. And I want you to know that those caps and those gowns that you wear are more than just the traditional attire of a graduate. They're symbolic. Symbolic of the long nights that you stayed up studying, preparing yourselves for finals. Symbolic, as Surrender mentioned, of the stressful days that you spent in those classes that you sometimes thought would keep you from getting to today, right? Symbolic of all of your academic achievements. But not only that, they're symbolic of the smiles that you've shared with one another at social gatherings. Symbolic of the lifetime relationships that you have established. Symbolic of the tears you've cried in the dormitory. And of course, of the community service that you perform side by side. And when you take all of those elements and wrap them into one, I hope that you understand that those caps and those gowns are symbolic of the growth that each of you has undergone. You know, for many of you, most of you in fact, years ago your parents and or guardians dropped you off. And today they gather here at this site to witness young men and young women ready, able, and prepared to assume their roles in American society and in the communities they serve. For others of you, you shook off the doubters and the naysayers you didn't take the traditional path of entering college right after high school, and even if you did, it maybe didn't work out the way that you had anticipated, but nevertheless, you stuck with it. And here you are today, and your accomplishment is just as remarkable as those people who took the traditional path. So to the class of 2023, I think all of us should give you a round of applause. Now, one thing I know of all the family and friends that are gathered here, the last thing you want to do is sit up here and listen to a bunch of us talk because you're ready to celebrate the accomplishments uh, of your folks. Uh, I know some of you are a little nervous uh, because Dr. Williams invited an attorney to speak. And you know, they say preachers and attorneys never know when to shut the heck up. Uh, but, but I'm mindful of the fact that we're here to celebrate you, so I won't take much of your time. But I know that you did not graduate from an average university. I know it's above average, and so I don't want to give an average talk. I want to talk about the things that you can build upon, because where you are now, you know, graduating is a little counterintuitive, right? You've done all of these days and weeks and months and semesters and years of studying, 
so that you could finally get to this point and you think you're finished, but here we are calling it a commencement where you're really just beginning. And that's true. You are just beginning the next phase of life. And then I was talking to Dr. Wallace in the hall. There's really no finish lines in life. There's always one more step to move towards. And so because you did not go to an average university, I want to talk about the things that I have found through my personal experience and through the people that I've studied about exceptional behavior. What's the mindset that allows people to build a legacy? Because that's the mindset I want each of you to have, not to be average, but to build a legacy. And there are certain fundamental characteristics and traits about building a legacy, and the first of which we've heard already is to work hard. Now that may sound cliche, you know, the great Vince Lombardi, the head coach of the Super Bowl champion, Super Bowl Packers back in the 60s, used to say, the man on the top of the mountain didn't fall there. And the implication was that you have to work to get there. But what does that mean? It means you have to be prepared what other people are not willing to do. As some of you enter your professions, your hours may be 8 to 5, but if you're showing up at 8 and you're leaving at 5, that's average. And you can't get caught up in in the hoi polloi and the noise that's going on around the water cooler. Uh, girl, I'm not staying if they're not paying me. Man, what you mean you working this weekend? We going to watch the game, right? You have to engage in behavior that the average people are not engaging in if you're going to build a legacy. Next, you have to understand that each of us has been given a talent by God. But when God gave us that talent, he didn't say that's it. He expects for us to work and enhance that talent. That is the expectation. And on the other side of that, there are blessings. I sometimes think that we don't always get it right in the church when we talk about waiting on a blessing. I have found in my life that my blessings have a direct correlation with the amount of effort that I give. And if you're sitting in this suit in a black robe and black gown or maroon, so, uh, maroon cap and gown, then you understand that same thing. You're blessed to be here, but it's a direct correlation to the effort that you gave. Kobe Bryant used to say, I was blessed with talent, but I used to work as if I had none. And that's the mindset of hard work that I think will allow you to build a big legacy. Also, those people who build a legacy, they understand the concept of preparation and time. It has been said, and I appreciate my frat brothers that shouted out, that on April 12th of 1992 at 7.31 p.m., I was initiated into Cap Alpha Psi Fraternity Incorporated, the Gamma Lambda Chapter. And I'm sure the statute of limitations has expired, but I don't want to get anyone in trouble. I will just say that there were things that I was encouraged very strongly to learn. <laughs> and I learned them well, and I retained a lot of that information. But we used to have this thing called the six Ps, and I'll modify it down to five because this is a family operation here. <laughs> but the five Ps that I'll tell you about were proper preparation prevents poor performance. And I've always carried that with me because I knew that I had heard the adage, those who fail to plan, plan to fail. And I knew that I needed to have something in place that would allow me to achieve the goals that I wanted to achieve. But you see, preparation and time management go hand in hand. And when you talk about time, there's, there's a funny thing that goes on, right? I could talk about all of the distinctions between us all. Some of us are men, some of us are women. Right? Some of us came from two-parent homes, some of us came from one-parent homes, some of us had no parents. Some of us are black, Latino, Asian, Asian Pacific Islander. Right? Some of us are able-bodied, some of us are disabled. And a lot of times, we will use those things as a disadvantage. My wife and I joke all the time because she runs a real estate business and she deals with a lot of contractors. And she'll say, oh, they're just talking to me like that because I'm a woman. Right? And I know that there are other people who will say, I didn't have this opportunity because I'm African-American or because I'm Latino. Those are the things that make us different. And if you're not careful, you'll use some of those things as an excuse not to succeed. But what makes us all the same? What makes us all the same is that each of us has 24 hours in a day. And the question that remains is, how will you use those 24 hours in order to accomplish your goals? Will you catch up on all the episodes of power or will you read books that make you more powerful? Will you catch up on what happened in the last season of empire or will you work to build your own empire? So how you decide to use that time is going to be imperative to how you build your legacy. And those who use it in the most wise fashion are those who experience greater success. Next, 
You have to understand that you have to have the courage to start. We talked about haters earlier, surrender, you know, even prayed for them. And that's a good thing. And we all know what haters are. They come in different forms. Some of them are enemies, right? And no matter what you do, they have nothing good to say about it. And they kind of secretly hope that you fail. But there's also people who love you and that you love. And they don't even know that they're hating. They think that they're giving you advice that's in your best interest because they don't share your vision. And you have to be cognizant of who those people are so that you can navigate and still accomplish the vision and goals that you've set out to accomplish. But the biggest person you need to be aware of is yourself. Because all of you have lived long enough to have come up with an idea and you said, oh, I'm gonna do blank or I'm gonna do X, Y, Z. And your mind was made up. And then you went to sleep and you woke up the next day and said, well, in order for me to do that, I, I need this much money. And, and I got to go to this school, and I don't know enough people. And before you know it, you have talked yourself out of the next great idea. And so the courage that I'm talking about is the courage to face that inner fear. Because that phenomenon I just described, it's simply just fear. It's you being afraid to give your maximum effort and failing. But the one thing that I have learned in life is that if you give your maximum effort, one of two things will happen. Most of the time, you will succeed at whatever goal you've set. And if you don't, you will have learned a valuable lesson that will prepare you for the next time you're ready to give your maximum effort. So have the courage to start. Once you do start, then finish what you start. The reality of today is that some of you sat in the chapel at your freshman orientation next to someone who's not here today. Because not everyone finishes what they start. And that's not to demean those people. Because everybody has their own journey. But you have to understand that the most successful people among us finish what they start. I remember seeing an interview with Tyler Perry years ago and Tyler Perry talked about before he became the person we all know him to be now. He said he filled out an application. He gave his resume to the gentleman that was interviewing him for a job. And the man sat down and looked at his resume pensively and looked up at Tyler a few times and looked back down at his resume. And finally, he pushed the resume away and he said, Mr. Perry, I'd like to know what you finished. And Tyler was confused by the question. He said, I'm sorry, sir, I don't understand what you're saying. He says, well, I see that you've started a lot of things, right? You started school, but you didn't finish. You started this job, but you didn't finish. You started this organization, but you didn't finish. And for that, that was an epiphany for Tyler Perry. He had an eye awakening moment and he decided at that very moment that he was going to be a person who finished what he started. And you don't need me to tell you just how that's worked out for him. He's accomplished things, especially outside of Hollywood that people never dreamed would be done. So we've got to finish what we've started. Next, and I think this is essentially important to the people that I've seen who have built a legacy people listed in your program, some of whom Dr. McDonald referenced. You have to live for a cause that's bigger than yourself. Some of you will see a look in the eyes of your parents today or your loved ones, and you will know it is pride that their baby has accomplished their goal. And I remember seeing that look in the eyes of my parents. And I will tell you, I don't say this publicly, but a lot of the decisions I make I try to say, what would my father be proud of in this situation? Because it's not just about me. Having all the children that I have, I think about what type of example do I want to set for them? Being involved in the community in the way that I am, and even to the extent that I'm involved with Houston Tillotson. I do it because I live for a cause that's bigger than myself, and I challenge each of you to do those things. Because if you become the most successful professional in the world, yet all of your familial and friend relationships are in the tank, how does that profit you in any way? So if you live for a cause that's bigger than yourself, you're on the path to creating your legacy. Lastly, I want each of you to understand that you need to compete. You can have whatever you want in this life, but nobody's going to give it to you. Cross the highway from Houston Tillotson, there's a graduation going on this weekend. And there's hundreds of other colleges with thousands of other members of the class of 2023. And frankly, the three or four decades before that that are still in the workforce, you're competing against them. 
If you decide to be an entrepreneur, you're competing for the same clients. And you have to understand that you have been given the foundation. When you walk across this stage and grab one of these books or your degree, you have been given the foundation for what it takes. I never demean any school. I said this at the gala and I'll say it today. I know for a fact that the University of Texas, I know firsthand the University of Texas provides a quality education and they prepare their students to compete. I know that Southern Methodist University and Baylor University provide quality educations and prepare their students to compete. I know the same is true for University of Oklahoma, Louisiana State University, University of Connecticut. And I know that because this guy that went to a school on the top of a hill in East Austin has a staff of people who are alumni of all of those places. And I know that each of you has been prepared to do the same thing, and I look forward to that happening. So as I prepare to take my seat, the last thing I will tell you is I want each of you to be ambassadors for this alma mater that we share. There will be people that you meet, and you will tell them that you went to Houston Tillotson, and they'll think it's in Houston. And you'll have to say, no, it's in Austin, but you hold your shoulders back and you say, it's the first institution of higher education in Austin, Texas. You will sit down in an interview, and the person responsible to interview you will reference your time at Huston Tillotson College. <laughs> and you have to say it's actually pronounced Houston, and they will respond, well, I didn't know because there's no O in it, thinking that you made an error on your resume. And you will have to say there's no O in it, but O oh, if you hire me. <laughs> I've been prepared by that school to help your company reach its next level of achievement. And I'm not in the billion dollar club yet, but I'm in the givers club. And as ambassadors of this school, I encourage each of you, and I understand for a lot of you it's grind time, right? The great John Morgan, who heads up Morgan & Morgan, personal injury law firm with offices all throughout the Southeast, used to make this analogy about adulthood and uh, high school, right? He said, being in your 20s is like being a freshman in high school, right? You just came from being the big man or big woman on campus at your middle school. Now you're at this new building. It's a little bit bigger. You don't really know your way around. You're trying to figure things out, but you're still in high school. That's what being in your 20s is like, right? You're grinding, trying to figure it out. Then being in your 30s is like being in your sophomore year, right? You've been around for a little while, but you still, you still don't have a lot of experience, but you're feeling a little bit more comfortable than you did when you were in your 20s. Being in your 40s is like being a junior. Hey, now I'm an upperclassman. I know some of the seniors. My network has grown a little bit. I'm a little bit more comfortable in what I'm doing. It's why you hear things like life begins at 40. And being in your 50s is like being in your senior year, right? That's just, hey, I got it all figured out. I've accomplished a lot of things. I'm much more comfortable around here. I can help the freshmen, sophomore, and juniors do what it is that they need to do. That's what it's about. And once you get to your 60s, 70s, 80s, and beyond, that's like grad school. We don't need to go into that. <laughs> but I know you recently learned at homecoming is that for most universities, large gifts that are given, like the generous gifts of the gardeners and, and other people who have contributed big number gifts, they don't comprise the majority of the amount that schools receive. It's the volume of smaller gifts. And so even if you are not in a financial position, because I know you got student loans waiting on you around the corner, right? Even if you're not in a financial position today to give, you're in a position to make the decision today to give. And I encourage you, each of you, to make the decision to give. And if each of you makes that decision to give, we'll get to that billion dollar club Dr. Wallace was talking about a little bit earlier. And the one thing that we all know as to how it can be done is because we understand that in union, there is strength. God bless you all. God bless Houston Tillerson University and congratulations. Don't go, don't go, don't go. Don't go too far. Don't go too far. Let's give it up for our son of HT, Attorney Gotsi.
we, we know you have everything in your office, HT. I'm not sure if you saw his shoes. <laughs> when you get a chance, take a snapshot. But we want to just present you just a token of our appreciation. Uh, and we have some other gifts that we are shipping you, but we wanted to present you this today. It is just a little wow. HT plaque that we can give you to represent for your office. We have some other stuff coming that we wanted to ship. So we thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Ross. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Absolutely fantastic. We will now have a selection by the Houston Tillerson University Concert Choir, followed by Miss Maya Davenport, the Student Government Association President, to pay tribute to the class of 1973.
Good morning. I am Maya Chardé Davenport, president of the Houston Tillotson University Student Government Association for the 2022-2023 academic school year. I would like to personally welcome you to the commencement ceremony for Houston Tillerson's University Class of 2023 and the 50-year reunion of the extraordinarily golden Class of 1973. Family, I am extremely honored to stand before you today and provide this tribute. The extraordinarily golden Class of 1973 arrived at 900 Chacon Street, our beloved Houston Tillerson University around the time when members of our community were finally eligible to attend any university in the U.S. legally. Class of 1973, you all had an option to choose any school in the U.S. and you chose our HBCU, an institution that our ancestors built that is constantly fighting for people of color and an institution that chose you. Over the past 50 years, Houston Tillotson University, Austin, Texas, and the world has changed tremendously. In 1973, your class was faced with the Vietnam War, Austin ISD was being sued by the government, Roe v. Wade was in the headlines, but through the midst of it all, you all had great music. Gladys Knight and the Pips' Midnight Train to Georgia, and the Spinners, Could It Be I'm Falling in Love, were the top, hit that, were the top hits that year. Yet many of the battles of inequality and justice you all faced in 1973 still remain the same battles of inequality and justice we face in 2023. Unbelievably, 50 years later, the case that saved women pregnancy rights is now actively being challenged by the Supreme Court. But we still have great music, like Jasmine Sullivan, Tim's, SZA, Lil Baby, and my favorite, Drake. In two short years, our beloved institution will have been standing and serving our community for 150 years. Y'all didn't clap hard enough, so I'm gonna say it again. In just two short years, our beloved HBCU, Houston Tillerson University, would have been standing and serving our institution, our, yeah, our institution for 150 years. As the first institution of higher learning, the only HBCU in Austin, Texas, to serve our community. The extraordinarily golden class of 1973, we salute you for having moved so gracefully and enthusiastically through the extraordinary changes and challenges over the past 50 years. As you matriculated through Austin's first institution of higher learning, your class built a legacy like none other. A legacy of excellence, a legacy of tradition, a legacy of education, and a legacy of tradition. I mean achievement, sorry. We applaud you for your wisdom, and we applaud you for your willingness to always learn new things, take on new responsibilities, find new passions, and to always be bold. As a member of the graduating class of 2023, it has been my privilege and my pleasure to share this beautiful weekend with you. I rejoice with you in the past, the present, and the future of our university and the accomplishments of its alumni, which my classmates and I are about to become. 
We are honored and we thank you for your return to campus while sharing your experiences in your 50 year reunion with us. Before I take my seat, I would like to leave you with a poem by one of my favorite poets. Hold fast to your dreams, for dreams die like a broken winged bird that cannot fly. Hold fast to your dreams, for when dreams go, life is a barren field frozen with snow. This poem titled Dreams by Langston Hughes reminds us to always hold on to our dreams and believe in the faith that the Lord has stored in us. All good wishes to the years ahead. May there be many more and may they be filled with peace, love, happiness, and joy. Thank you. Thank you, Madam President. I now call our Provost and Vice President for Academic Affairs, Dr. Archibald Vanderpoy, to the podium to oversee the conferring of degrees. Thank you, Madam President. The deans will be assisted by Assistant uh, Marshal Maurice Osborne, Director of Records and Registration, and Ms. Ernestina Strickland, who has certified each diploma with the great seal of the university. Dr. Rohan Thompson, Dean of the School of Business and Technology, will you please take your place at this time? Will the candidates for the Master of Business Administration degree within the School of Business and Technology please stand? <laughs> Madam President, all the candidates presented today have fulfilled the university's requirement for the degree and have been approved by the faculty and the Board of Trustees to receive the Master of Business Administration degree as appropriate. I'm now proud to present the candidates for the Master of Business Administration degree. By the authority vested in the President of Houston Tillerson University and upon... There we go. Can you hear me? Yeah, we got to hear this. By the authority vested in me as president of Houston Tillerson University and upon recommendation of the faculty and approval of the board of trustees, I now proudly confer upon the graduates within the School of Business and Technology the Master of Business Administration degree with all rights, honors, privileges and responsibilities thereunto appertaining. Please continue to come forward. Malcolm Xavier Haraway. Testing. Testing. Divine Oriana Lovin. Christopher Jacob Luna.
Alyssa Abra Nelson. Zoe Rodriguez. Pamela Wells. Madam President, I present to you the Master of Business Administration graduates. Graduates, you may be seated. <laughs> Dr. Michael Hirsch, Dean of the College of Arts and Sciences, will you please take your place at this time? Will the candidates for the degree of Master of Education within the College of Arts and Sciences please stand? Madam President, all the candidates presented today have fulfilled the university's requirement for the degree and have been approved by the faculty and the Board of Trustees to receive the Master of Education degree as appropriate. I am now proud to present the candidates for the Master of Education. By the authority vested in me as the president of Houston Tillerson University and upon the recommendation of the faculty and approval of the Board of Trustees, I now proudly confer upon these candidates within the College of Arts and Sciences the Master of Education degree with all of the honors, rights, privileges, and responsibilities thereunto appertaining. Would you please continue to come forward? Corinne Clifton Miller. <laughs> Fensinuval Chardonnay Drake. Christine Vega Hernandez. <laughs> Thelma Herrera. Iman Josie. <laughs> Ashley Kennard. Ashley Kevon Lucas Ridley. <laughs> Ed
Aaron Miller. Madam President, I present to you the Master of Education graduates. Graduates, you may be seated. Will the candidates for the Bachelor of Arts and Bachelor of Science degrees within the College of Arts and Sciences please stand and place the graduation hood on your classmates. Madam President, all the candidates presented today have fulfilled the university's requirement for the degree and have been approved by the faculty and board of trustees to receive the Bachelor of Arts or Bachelor of Science degree as appropriate. I am now proud to present the candidates. By the authority vested in me as president of Houston Tillerson University and upon recommendation of the faculty and approval of the Board of Trustees, I now proudly confer upon the graduates within the College of Arts and Sciences the Bachelor of Arts or Bachelor of Science degree with all of the honors, rights, privileges, and responsibilities thereunto appertaining. Would you please come forward? Kimberly, Kimberly, excuse me, okay, I know that a lot of excitement, let's get going. Kimberly Renee Dukes. Sharik Devon Willis. Kenneth Andre Fowler. Lorraine Carolina Franco Briseño. Christy Gail Astrin. Marlia Victoria Drake. Darnell Alexander Morris. Ashton Shanae Nolan Lowe, Magnum Cum Laude. Alexandra Parker, summa cum laude. (laughs) 
Patricia Elena Ramirez. Tamara Nicole Thompson. Talitha Marie Brandt Summa Cum Laude. Glenda Martinez. Mia Chique Patrice Wells. Irish Yvonne Wynn. Oriol Gallegos. David Jonathan Cross the second. <laughs> Destiny Nicole Allen. Mary C. Benitez Malagon, summa cum laude. Leslie Deshawn Brewster, magnum cum laude. Lisa Antoinette Brown, magnum cum laude. Gregory Lynn Clark II. Adriana Nicole Golden. Christina Gorosilieta, summa cum laude. Brittany Nicole Henry. Lydia Hernandez, summa cum laude. Brianna Hutchinson, cum laude. Frederick D. Johnson, Sr. <laughs> Surrender, Carolyn Lockrich, Magnum Cum Laude. Sheena Karen Luna, Summa Cum Laude. Anna Karen Medina. Lauren Simone Moore, Magnum Cum Laude. Faith Okpara, Magnum Cum Laude. Skylar Monique Rivers. Hannah Rose Robertson. Audrey Margaret Rodriguez, summa cum laude. Lilia Elena Sanchez, summa cum laude. Yolanda Aida Sluss, summa cum laude. Bria Renee Thompson, summa cum laude.
Adesua Usa Usu Magnum Kumare. Carlton Lewis Griffin. Colton Lewis Griffin. Shaquille Nicole Tobler. Isaac Lewis Lane James. The John A. Nikayla Mills. Usatu Shakur Shawatu Bailey. Desmond Lavon Benham. Juan Antonio Bocanegra Jr. Magnum Cum Laude. Justice Unique Brooks, Brooks Magnum Cum Laude. Kevion Lewayne Cornett. Maia Charday Davenport. Leslie Marare Davila Summa Cum Laude. Caitlin Nicole De La Fuente Magnum Cum Laude. Nina R. Evans. John Andrew Gilliland, Magnum Cum Laude. Carlos Jesus Godoy Valerde. Miles Jelani Granberry. Andro, Andrew Logan Guzman, summa cum laude. Xavier Howard. Davion Tariq Hunter, summa cum laude. Iman Matan. Damien Ovalle, magnum cum laude. Brian David Rattan. Elizabeth Monique Ridley, magnum cum laude. Abigail Jolyn Rubio. Ilana Natasha J. Sanford Magnum Cum Laude. Nicholas Angelo Tovar. Jackie Wilson Jr. Delton Lataris Woods, Jr., number two.
Britton, Renee Mackenzie Andrews, May Summa Cum Laude. Tavion Anthony McGee. Samatria Desiree Richardson, cum laude. Jalen Nicole Young. Kennedy Troy Fears. Kyle Alakim Alexander. Shonda Birch, summa cum laude. Josette Monique Calderon. Jonathan Clay Carter, summa cum laude. Davin Davis. <laughs> Carla Pede de Devote, summa cum laude. Latoya Nicole Duffy, summa cum laude. Ashanti Amor Ellis. Andrea Akela Jasmine Fresh. Nija Harris. Easley Guzman Mendoza. Kennedy Kiasi Hartman Willis, cum laude. Nicole Huffman, summa cum laude. Lorinda Maria Hunter. <laughs> Jacques Brown. <laughs> Alyssa Nicole James. Taylor Knight, summa cum laude. Yasmin E. Brown, summa cum laude. Felicia M. McRae, magnum cum laude. Phoenix, Caroline Lee, Michelis, Magnum Cum Laude. Morgan Ray Mims, Summa Cum Laude. Damian Peter Montague, Cum Laude. Ashley Joe Altman. Darrell Rudolph Cum Laude.
Darrell Randolph, summa cum laude. Jamar Giovanni Reyes. Delia E. Rios. Zyria Renee Short. Shante Lalita Smith. Justin Andrew Smith. Alicia Ulia Perez. Victoria Sanchez. Jordan Briachere Sanders. Frederick Charles Comwell Guest the second. Jameer Janelle Mays Magnum Cum Laude. Khadija Alani Taylor. Jatori Ishan White. <laughs> Timothy Taylor Bishop, summa cum laude. Angel Marie Mincy. Joshua Lamuel Thompson. Yes. Reagan Amaya Dixon. Madam President, I present to you the Bachelor of Arts in Bachelor of Science degree of Arts and Sciences. Graduates, you may be seated. <laughs> Dr. Rohan Thompson, please take your place at this time. Will the candidates for the Bachelor of Arts and Bachelor of Science degree within the School of Business and Technology please stand and place the graduation hood on your classmates. Madam President, all the candidates presented today have fulfilled the university's requirement for the degree and have been approved by the faculty and the board of trustees to receive the Bachelor of Arts or Bachelor of Science degree as appropriate. I am now proud to present the candidates. By the authority vested in me as the president of Houston Tillerson University, and upon recommendation of the faculty and approval of the Board of Trustees, I now proudly confer the graduates within the School of Business and Technology the degree of Bachelor of Arts or Bachelor of Science degree with all of the honors, rights, 
privileges and responsibilities thereunto appertaining. Would you please continue to come forward? Raja Lynn Banks. Monica Raquel Bolanos. Alyssa Kelly Aguilar. Valerie Renee Alexander. Lisa Ann Medina. Jaina Lara. Maria Guadalupe Cantu. Eurydia Estela Avila. John C. Chacon. Jerry Connerly the second. Lakina K. Cook. Vanessa Cop. <laughs> Salsa Bill Dugman. <laughs> Carl Deshay Sr. Marilyn Ashley Diaz. <laughs> Layla Marcelette Estes. Bridget Eileen Ferguson. Noah Shane Fletcher. <laughs> Goitham Gibber Hewa. <laughs> Leticia Green. Brittany Antoinette Hastings. <laughs> Alyssa Hernandez. <laughs> Turquoise Cherie Hernandez, summa cum laude. Trevor Winthrop Howard, Magna Cum Laude. Raven Simone Huntington.
Tamika Deshaun Jackson. Derek DeAndre Jackson, Jr. Naisha Dion Jenkins, Summa Kun Laude. Jocelyn Joanna Johnson, Kun Laude. Jaquarius Lamar Johnson, Kun Laude. Dominic Jerome Jones, magna cum laude. Kewen Harry Kingwell. Amy Lou Martinez. Kimberly Deshaun McCarver. Brian Levert McKenzie. Diana Lynn Michael Sunko, cum laude. Myra Alexander Muniz. Ronnie Jessica Munoz. Charlotte Delisa Nelson. Sharon Robinson. Lucinda Selena Seals. Evelyn Marie Snyder. Tiburcio Butch Soto. Ebony Nicole Stearns. Carolyn Jeanette Thomas. Adam Andrew Vasquez. Michaela Dion Walker. David Wesley Welch. Gail Rochelle Whitley. Brooke Michelle Wilkerson, cum laude. L'Oreal Williams Daniels, cum laude.
Timothy Savalas Willis, summa cum laude. Tanisha Wilson, summa cum laude. Miles Preston Wilkes. Ebunolua, blessing at a basin. Jose Angel Mendes, summa cum laude. Tomas Montanez, summa cum laude. Taya Leanna Wilson. Kasani Demick Jared Horace. Madam President, I present to you the Bachelor of Arts and Bachelor of Science degree graduates from the School of Business and Technology. Graduates, you may be seated. <laughs> Dr. Hirsch, please take your place at this time. Will the candidates for the Associate of Arts in Liberal Arts degree within the College of Arts and Sciences please stand? Madam President, all of the candidates presented today have fulfilled the university's requirement for the degree and have been approved by the faculty and the board of trustees to receive the Associate of Arts in Liberal Arts degree as appropriate. I am now proud to present the candidates. By the authority vested in me as president of Houston Tillerson University and upon recommendation of the faculty, and approval of the Board of Trustees, I now proudly confer upon the graduates within the College of Arts and Sciences the Associate of Arts and Liberal Arts degree with all of the honors, rights, privileges, and responsibilities thereunto appertaining. Would you please continue to come forward? Christia Deshaun Bearfield suit up with honors. Marion Bedford. Marion Bedford. <laughs> Adriana Campos with honors. Ebony Danica Clark. Taya Renee Danford with honors. Mark Anthony Estrada with honors. Cheryl B. Johnson with honors. Deanna Demique Griffin 
with honors. Dominique Griffin with honors. Len King with honors. Mariah Justice White. Tanya Marie Washington. Pamela Nicole Tyree with honors. Kimberlyn Thomas with honors. Kimberly Sotelo. Camille Scott with honors. Noelle Rose with honors. Joe Luis Rodriguez. Lakeisha M. Parker with honors. Dion Nicole Payne with honors. Frankie L. Mendez with honors. Ebony M. Maxwell with honors. Madam President, I present to you the Associate of Arts and Liberal Arts graduates. Graduates, you may be seated. Thank you, Dr. Vanderpoy, Dr. Thompson, and Dr. Hirsch, and Mr. Osborne, and Ms. Strickland. Let's give them a round of applause, especially Ms. Strickland. At this time, we will confer an honorary degree. Madam President, I'm pleased to present Dr. Rosalie Ruth Martin for the Honorary Doctor of Humane Letters degree. Dr. Martin's outstanding credentials have been reviewed by the university's Academic Honors Award Subcommittee, recommended by the faculty, and approved by the Board of Trustees. It is now my pleasure to present Dr. Rosalie Martin for the Honorary Doctor of Humane Letters degree. The Honorary Doctor of Humane Letters that is being bestowed upon Dr. Rosalie Ruth Martin honors the outstanding contributions she has made at Houston Tillotson College and Houston Tillotson University during her stellar 50-year tenure as a valued member of the faculty. It further recognizes her national record of advocacy, her prominence as a political and social strategist, and her distinction of being the longest serving employee in the history of this institution. <laughs> Friends and colleagues of Dr. Rosalie Martin who are presented today are asked to stand. Okay, never mind. I was going to ask you to stand, but never mind. Continue standing 
for the presentation. Houston Tillotson University has been recognized for its faculty achievements. Today, two HT faculty will join the ranks of faculty emeriti in their respective disciplines. The two faculty members have been recommended by their department chair and the dean and have been approved by the board of trustees. Dr. Rosalie Martin, please stand. Dr. Martin joined the HD faculty in 1978 and retiring after 50 years of meritorial service to HD and the academic community. Dr. Martin holds a Bachelor of Arts degree in Sociology from the University of Texas at El Paso, a Master of Science in Social Work and a PhD in Sociology from the University of Texas at Austin. She holds several certificates and licenses in her discipline. She became a tenured faculty at HT in 1986. As professor of sociology, she served at HT in both faculty and administrative positions. She served as chair of the social science division, head of the Department of Behavioral Sciences Department, and acting dean of the College of Arts and Sciences. Dr. Martin taught a wide range of courses, and a student-centered teaching approach has garnered numerous teaching excellence awards including the prestigious 2003 Pi Professor Award and the 2020 Richard Hopkins Touch Award for Professional Services. Dr. Martin is a recipient of other numerous scholarly and community awards. Her academic and community work includes workshops, seminars, research, and publications, both national and international. Dr. Martin served under five HT presidents and has authored a book on four of the presidents. Please join me in recognizing HT's newest professor emerita, Dr. Rosalie Martin. <laughs> Dr. Gloria Quinland, please stand. Dr. Quinlan joined the HD faculty in 1998 and retiring after 25 years of meritorial service to HD and the academic community. Dr. Quinlan received a Bachelor of Music Education degree from Texas Southern University, a Master of Music degree from Colorado State University, and a Doctor of Musical Arts degree from the University of Texas at Austin. She became a full professor at HD in 2007 and she served as chair of the Human Humanities and Fine Arts Department. She has also served as chairperson and member of several HD committees. Dr. Quinlan was instrumental in improvements made to the infrastructure and enrollment growth of the HD music program. Her students have performed for many national and international audiences, including the, Gane uh, the Carnegie Hall and with country music recording artist Jelly Roll, at the 2023 CMT Music Awards. She also has numerous individual performances as a soprano soloist and has also conducted numerous clinics and workshops. 
Her colleagues describe her as a scholar in every sense of the word and an example to all faculty. Dr. Quinlan is a recipient of several awards. Dr. Quinlan's final HD concert called The Swan's Curtain Call, where all proceeds from the concert will go to an endowed music scholarship. I am proud to announce HD's newest professor emerita, Dr. Gloria Quinlan. Thank you. Dr. McDowell, please approach the podium to administer the introduction of the graduates into the International Alumni Association. Ms. Kennedy Hartman will immediately follow with a response from the class of 2023. Thank you. Will all the graduates please stand? As an alum, I do solemnly swear to uphold the legacy of Houston Tennessee University, embarked by the spirit of the university's mission and our century standard and commitment to excellence. I pledge activity membership in the International Alumni Association whenever I may be, wherever I may be. I will I will work to earn my own place among alumni who by their devotion to the ideal have, uh, that have brought support, recognition, and honor to our beloved institution. If you will please raise your right hand. I solemnly swear to commit to, my, to myself to the highest standards of service humanity, and wherever my life allows me to impact others. I further swear to provide moral, intellectual, and generosity financial support, and I will encourage others to attend my alma mater. Please repeat after me. I solemnly swear to stand in union, I to stand in union. with Houston Tillerson University and pride to and that should be provide. Provide strength, provide strength. To, the to the foundation on which she stands, on which she stands. with steadfast love, love and purpose future, and purpose future. Rendering, service rendering service community, state and national, state and, national. and so to live as ever to bring honor, respect to our alma mater. Thank you. All right. <laughs> Y'all can sit down. I'm not gonna make y'all stand through my speech. Y'all can sit down, <laughs> cause I'm tired of standing myself, so y'all can sit down. <laughs> hey, class of 2023. <laughs> As some of you may know, I am Kennedy Kiasi Hartman-Wills, and I served as your senior class president. <laughs> Before I begin, I would like to thank the faculty and staff of Houston Tillotson University. They are more than just workers, they are family. I can honestly say I would not be standing up here if it wasn't for them. When I first started at Houston Tillotson back in 2019, I was five months pregnant. Woo. <laughs> and my family is what kept me going through the past four years. So when I say this, I mean it with all my heart. This university is built like no other, and they will have your back like no other. They have guided us through the last four years of life here and have been our home away from home. 
I would also like to send a special welcome and thanks to the ladies of Alpha, Kappa Alpha, Sorority Incorporated. <laughs> My bad if that hurt y'all ears. <laughs> Today is the day that we reflect on our exceptional greatness and embark on our career paths as we are now the next generation of doctors, lawyers, psychologists, successful businessmen and or women, and much more. Today we shall, celebrate, we shall celebrate and we remember all the successes we have achieved here at Houston Tillotson University. We'll leave behind nothing but good old HBCU memories. From the hump nights, to the divine nine, to Mr. Jasper's cooking, to the cookouts in front of the union, and of course, the random Chalmers parking lot fun. And y'all know I had to add this in here. We cannot forget about the boat party. Because if you know, you know. We had a time. People always look and compare graduation to the ending of a chapter. But I look at it as the beginning of one. 63% of people finish college. 25.6% are black. 23% are Hispanic or Latino. And 45% are white. So graduates, look at the person next to you and make sure you say that you beat the statistics and you will continually do so. <laughs> Graduation is a launching point of success and a breaking down of barriers. We now have the tools, knowledge, and education to set forth greatness and accomplishments. We have pushed through and prevailed through the trials of finishing college and are now rewarded and celebrated. Graduates, this is more than just our day. This is our year. This is our year to prosper in our goals and dreams. This is our year to exalt our degree, to signify our hard work, to put forward our expertise and capabilities into being the highest of quality in our working fields. The past is no longer relevant, as your mind and your resume has now expanded you to enter into rooms and open doors that the old you couldn't even touch. Now, before I close out and we throw our caps in the air, because I know we're, I know we're ready, because I'm ready, <laughs> always remember that learning never stops. From the great words of Dr. Seuss, you have brains in your head, you have feet in your shoes. You can steal yourself any direction you choose. You, you're on your own, and you know what you know, and you are the one who decide where to go. So with that, I challenge you all to pursue life with great earnest and confidence within yourself. Because with every step you take, your time as a ram will always steer you straight. I challenge you to strive for greatness, the type of greatness that is remembered for generations and not just our generation. Through the transition, the paths may be rough and the journey will be faced with many trials and tribulations. Remember that you are a graduate of the Houston Tillerson University. I repeat that, remember that you are a graduate of the Houston Tillerson University, the one and only HBCU in Austin, Texas and you will prevail through any and everything. Congratulations, class of 2023. Now graduates, please stand for the moment that you have all been waiting for. Oh, take my time, okay. So now warm up your arm and grab your tassel that is on the right side. And now you may turn your tassel from right to left. <laughs> Parents, 
parents, grandparents, mom and them, this is your time to party. Let's give them a round of applause. Congratulations, graduates. And now speaking, now the, you are all now alumni. And speaking of alumni, at this time, I invite the former members of the Houston Tillerson Concert Choir to the stage. If you can start to make your way to the stage for the singing of the Hallelujah Chorus and the Alma Mater, if you will come in from this side over here, that would be outstanding. And graduates, you may now be seated. As we prepare to exit, please remain in place. Um, guests, to all of our guests, please remain in place for the recessional. We will now have the singing of the Hallelujah Chorus, the singing of the Alma Mater, followed by the benediction by Reverend Donald Brewington.
Would you please stand for the singing of the alma mater? the sending forth and the benediction. Go forth from this place this day in the spirit of a living, a loving, and a joyful God. Go forth. Go forth knowing that you come from an above average institution. Go from you are the first institution of higher learning in the city of Austin, Texas, and we are in HBCU. Go forth. Go forth being exceptional, for you are more than average. Go and build your legacy. Go forth. Go forth laboring when others are, are, are playing. Go forth thinking when others are sleeping and building a legacy when others are waiting on a dream. Go forth. Go forth using your time well as you plan for your future, learning from life's lessons, working as if everything depended on you and trusting God to get you through. Go forth. Go forth knowing that we, your HT family, and all those who love you and who you love are proud of you. And remember, that your setbacks are simply, st st uh, simply setups for your success. Just finish what you start and don't be afraid to compete. Go forth. Go forth knowing that God, through the persons of President Dr. Melva K. Wallace and our HT alum, Mr. David Gotze, urge you that as you go prepare for your kingdom, that you give back. And now, May the grace of God, 
May his sweet spirit of his holy communion be with you. May it uh, rest with you and give you peace as you travel life's journey. All this we offer in the name of Jesus. Amen.